the big 70 millimeter premiere is on on uh, Christmas Day. Yeah. I went to see uh, Django Unchained mm -hmm. at the movies. I think the day after Christmas, yeah, yeah. three years ago, my with my parents, they went to see Les Mis, and I went to see Django. Good for you. <laughs> is, is was it your intention to? to release the film on Christmas, or is that just a coincidence? Well, it, it kind of ended up um, being a little bit of a coincidence as far as when we got, uh, by the time that we got finished with it and everything, that seemed actually the best date uh, uh, to come out. Because uh, this is actually my third movie to open on Christmas. Um, and you're Jackie, a very Christmassy yeah, kind of. I am. Jackie Brown <laughs> opened on Christmas, and uh, uh, Django Unchained opened on Christmas, and this one opened on Christmas. So I think the link between all three of those is there's black people in this movie. Okay. <laughs> and that's making it a good Christmas movie. Now, I will admit that I'm ignorant when it comes to things like 70 millimeter film. I don't yeah. know what that means. Why is that a special thing and why did you want to do that? Well, it's, you know, it, it's interesting. To me, there was this aspect of, well, well one, you know, uh, some people like all oh, the, the, the digital filmmaking out there. I'm not such a fan of it. And uh, I like shooting on film and I even like showing it on film whenever that's possible. And so I thought, well, if I'm going to shoot on film, let me shoot in 70 millimeter. I think that would, be a good, that would be a good way to do it. And also there was this kind of aspect of, which is kind of strange uh, when you think about like how weird and crazy this movie is, mm -hmm. but to give it a real big presentation, the way like the, the big movie, the way the movies like Ben-Hur and stuff in the 60s were given. And one of the things that's kind of neat about that, I think, is the fact that, um, as time has gone on, it just seems like you go to the movies and you get a little bit less and a little bit less as like the last 20 years have gone on. But I even think for the last 30 years, there used to be a thing where you'd go to the movies and it was kind of a big thing. Right. All right, and it was a big show and there you go. And now it's kind of fallen down into almost like just you're renting a chair for two hours and then you leave. And so the idea here was to give everyone a big show. So for, in the, for instance, in the road show, yeah, explain that, the, why it's called you know, a roadshow. It's called a roadshow because that was a big thing that they used to do in the 60s. Usually what would happen was you'd have a big, big movie, and, uh, and before it came out, you'd have a roadshow where you had advanced tickets, people would get dressed up to go to it. It would be like going out to the opera or going out to the ballet or something. And you'd get a, a, a program. The, uh, the movie would have uh, an overture at the beginning, like a Broadway show. Mm -hmm. uh, it would have an intermission in the middle of it. You, you, uh, you get this like fancy program. And that was what you did. And usually the movie was a little bit longer than the, norm, uh, than the uh, general release version. And then, you know, then they would, uh, that would be a big deal and that would play for a few weeks and then they would release it, uh, the theater or drive in near you, a little shorter without all all that pomp and circumstance. Are you the only one guy who does this? Does anybody else do this? Well, no one has done this for a long time, all right? Now, after this comes out, maybe we'll understand why people don't do it anymore, <laughs> all right? Uh, but I think it's really cool, and I, I think it's just really neat, and especially for my fans who like my stuff, I think yeah. it's a little bit of a present for them.